You ever felt like you're firefighting someone else's bad architectural decisions? Imagine this. You're not just squashing bugs. You're orchestrating a symphony of systems. Welcome to the channel. Let's fix this mess. Picture this. You push a release and everything seems fine until Monday morning chaos hits you in the face with a SEV1. Is that how you want every weekend to go? Here's the five-step system from developer to CTO that doesn't involve accepting sleep deprivation as your baseline. It's like climbing Dante's nine circles of tech hell. But I promise there's less actual demons. Step one, master the tech language. Speak Java, Scala, cool. But let's see how you talk with stakeholders. Turning technical babble into business insight is your first step. Imagine you're the UN translator, where each null pointer exception becomes, let's improve the user experience. Ever throw out some technical terms to look smarter and just watch the whole conversation die? Yeah, we've all been there. And that's exactly what you can't do. But let's ground this. Say you have this mess of a feature toggle. Now, humanize that logic. Less Frankenstein, more functional. We're treating logic like a character now. It shouldn't be a mystery what's coming next. Step two, embrace the dark art of context switching. When you hit CTO level, expect to juggle strategic planning, team issues, and the random server meltdown because some rogue semicolon decided it hated uptime. Context switching will make you feel like an imposter. Plot twist? That's where your real growth starts. Picture this. You're in the middle of troubleshooting a memory leak when right then you're called into an exec meeting to explain why the company app is running slower than a 90s dial-up modem. Missions, not tasks. Do you remember that one code review turn roast session? where your variable names became public enemy number one? Leave a comic. Epic flambe or quick char. And here's the secret. Being this multi-headed dragon comes with a uh, misunderstood benefit. Step three, sculpt the culture with code. Culture fit, culture add. Forget the buzzwords. You're the culture architect now. How you code the legacy you build, that's culture in action. With great code comes not just great responsibility, but attitude. Set standards high and you avoid creating Franken code that haunts pipelines for years. Let's animate that. A god object is like that micromanaging boss who tries to do everything badly. Avoid that like a weak old sandwich. Dependency injection? It's like team members in a productive stand-up, not a bureaucratic brawl. Trying to expose old code smells? Consider refactoring that singleton who thinks he's more important than he actually is. Step four, build authority without the ego. Channel your inner Yoda. You don't need a lightsaber, just hard-won clarity perfected from late night hacks and how did a poly side major end up managing devs moments. Authority is built on trust. Be the go-to, not by knowing it all, but by lifting your team higher. Validate this. Your burnout isn't a badge of honor. It's a teacher. It's a warning that your limits are real and respecting them is where real leadership starts. I remember that time we were doing a deployment a bit late. Some major bug stalled the whole team. You could see the tension in the office. A junior dev found the issue, some missing semicolon in a regex string. Their win wasn't fixing that semicolon. It was that the CTO recognized their spark, not just the task. Call this the uh, trampoline effect. You foster momentum by recognition because your success at the CTO level rides on the shoulders of others. By the way, ever roll out a new process thinking this is going to save all of us, but then you realize everyone hates it because it buried some important emails under some flood of noise. It's like that Monty Python Viking skip the spam menu. Yeah, been there too. Which feeds into something critical for step five. Step five, craft adaptable systems. Marry agility with stability. Hang on, isn't that a paradox? Sure, but that's the secret. You can't predict every fire, but you can design systems that bend without breaking. Think of CICD as an ecosystem. Each commit isn't just another ticket. It's a reinforcement a layer of resilience. Modern continuous integration tools, Jenkins, CircleCI, GitHub Actions, 
they aren't just pipelines. They're your build system's polite but firm security guards. Good news. Bad news? Your train feature might survive launch day or drag you down into overwork oblivion. Technology's karma doesn't forget. Ever feel like managing feature rollouts is like herding caffeinated cats while blindfolded during a fire drill? Same here. Put it all together and you're not just a dev anymore. You're the one building the infrastructure for growth, stability, and respect. As a wise dev once said when they were deep inside refactoring hell, hard? Yeah. Worth it? Absolutely. You're still here. That's the kind of dedication I totally approve. You keep that up, you're gonna go far in life.